All right, folks, Mark here. This this video is not my typical science or theology. This this video right here is is just I, I want to talk about about going through the struggle, right? Going going through the struggle, right? A lot of people don't like that, right? In this age that we live in, what I'm about to do, uh, I'm gonna lose a lot of points, and it's definitely not the cool thing to do, right? In this age, every everyone has to be cool on social media, so I'm going through the opposite, right? Right here, I got I got some goober, the Smuckers, goober peanut butter. It's both the jelly and the little peanut fella right here, the little jelly. So it's jelly and peanut butter mixed in one. And this was strategic. This was very strategic. Let me explain. I was in a supermarket. I had like maybe $8 and like 75, 77 cents to be exact. I had three quarters and two pennies in my pocket. And I'm like, damn, I don't get my check till another you know, week and a half, whatever the case would be. So I'm broke. And I only got like $8 not even a full 10, right? And my, my car, my car is like giving me problems and I got a little bit of gas in my car. I got enough gas just to get me to the house and my car is like all, like my car is messed up right now. You know what I'm saying? It, it's it, it's like, it does the Harlem shake when it be driving. Like I'm just going through it with my car right now, but whatever. So so I got my car issues, right? And I got $8.77 and I'm hungry and I'm in a supermarket and I'm like, damn, I don't have no money. And I, I'm like, all right, so you know what? I got some bread. You know what I'm saying? Look, you see, two for five, two, you're right, two, two bread. You're like, I'm got to like one slice of bread left, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Don't judge me. You know what I'm saying? I've been eating my peanut butter bread. So it's like two for five, right? But so I got me some bread. So I got, so I got, so that means I got three dollars and seventy seven cents left, right? I wanted to get peanut butter and I wanted to get jelly. Now, the, the shit is hilarious. Don't laugh at me, folks. It's rough out here on the It's hard out here on the pimp. It's hard out here on the pimp. You know, but we're going to pimp more, pimp it. So, pimp this. So, the peanut butter, I was looking at uh, Jiffy. I like the Jiffy peanut butter, the crunchy one. I grew up on it. I love the Jiffy crunchy one. But that joint was like $3 and change. And I'm like, there, yeah, that's going to be the whole three seventy seven, dollars right? Because I've already spent five on two, the two, two loaves of bread. And then I saw I'm like, all right, so this ain't gonna work. Cause the peanut the, the, the peanut butter is like takes the whole three seventy seven. And then I'm looking at the jelly, the jelly's like another three, four dollars. So I'm like, there's no way. So I'm like, I'm woke I'm, I'm frustrated because I'm like, all right, should I just get peanut butter? All right, I'm gonna just get the peanut butter. But then I'm like, wait a minute. You know, I remember you could get the both of them mixed. So I saw I'm like, yo, please let them have the mix joint, because I grew up on Smuckers. I remember the Goober mix. So sure enough, boom, I found it right here, folks. Goober. This is what this is what I call a happy medium. This is what I call a compromise, right? A compromise between peanut butter and jelly. You know, should I, you know, which one should I get? I could only afford one. It's tough decisions. Decisions, decisions, right? Choices, choices, tough choices in life we gotta make. But I found a happy medium. So this right here gives you both in one. So folks, if you're out there and you haven't, you had a dilemma, you had a crossroads, and you don't know which way to go, peanut butter or jelly, just go for goobers because they give you two and one. All right? And and that's so that's my introduction to the struggle right there. Now let's talk. A buddy of mine, we grew up together in high school. You know what I'm saying? Me, him, his wife, all of us went to school together. 25 years, 20 plus years now, right? We're now 40, so it's 20 plus years now. She calls me the other day whining, crying, complaining. Oh, your boy got me taking the bus. And, you know, ba 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 I put in my time. I should never be on no damn bus with all these smelly people and just going off and on and on. And I'm a, I'm a friend, so I'll let you vent and, and release and be cathartic and catharsis and purge yourself of that energy. So I let her, you know, it's just going in, going in at least 15 minutes. Just blah, 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 blah. Bus, I, blah, I can't believe this. Like shit, blah, 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 blah. And I'm listening. And at the end, I politely said, with all due respect, you're a friend of mine for over 20 plus years. I love you like a sister, a, a, a big sister. But with all due respect, shut the fuck up and get on the bus. There was a, a moment of silence, an awkward silence, because a friend does not expect a friend to speak so aggressively. Right. They, they, they're expecting some kind of comfort. Well, this is comfort. It's called tough love. After I said, shut the fuck up and get on the bus, I followed it with this. I, I've known you for 20 plus years. I've, I've been to your house many, many times over. Uh, I, I've opened your fridge because we we're a family. I've been in your fridge. Your fridge is always fulfilled with food from top to every food you can think of. 
amazing food. All the they got a lot of kids, so there's a lot of goodies. All the little goodies. I love going into their fridge and shit because I like good. I, you know, they got all the goodies. Cause they got kids, you know what I'm saying? So they got like the 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 the, uh, the, the apple sauce, the, the fruit mix. They got all the good goodies. Uh, I said I've been to your house many times over. Fridge is always full with food. Uh, in your parking lot, in, in your driveway, there's always a Mercedes Benz truck, a Mercedes Benz coupe, a, a 2017 BMW, a 2016 Mercedes. All throughout these years, I've seen nothing but Mercedes and BMWs in your driveway. Correct and well, shut the fuck up and get on the bus. The point I'm making, I'm thinking, I think you guys are drawing my conclusion here. The point I'm making is this, folks. Life ain't always going to be Mercedes-Benz. Sometimes it's going to be the Q13 or the Q36 or, or the Q8. You, you understand what I'm saying? Life ain't always going to be uh, filet mignon. Sometimes you got to go back to ramen noodles. Sometimes you got to get my man Goober and, and some, some whole wheat bread. You you, 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 know, you dig what I'm saying? I just bought this house, and I say just, meaning within the year, January. That means two things, right? A big ticket item purchase was made, and I'm not a rich person. I'm an average, regular, Joe working guy. So that means, common sense, there's going to be some uh, what's called accumulation, right, to rebuild. I'm going to probably be running a deficit until I can rebuild myself and get my finances back in, you know, uh, at a surplus, right? So until then, I might have to be doing some bread and some, some, just some gooba, right? Now, now, please, this. Let me get into, uh, intellectual with y'all. Uh, GDP. G the GDP, it, it accounts for two-thirds of all economic activity within an economy, within a country. Within a nation, it's called GDP, which stands for Gross Domestic Product. The GDP accounts again for two thirds, two thirds to sixty-six percent. It's reported quarterly. Again, it's an indication. It is indicative of how the country has performed economically within that quarter. Right? Uh, uh, you have what's called a surplus, and you have what's called a, uh, a deficit. Uh, I say all that to say this: take that macroeconomic instrument or mechanism or gauge. And narrow it down to what's called a micro, instead of a macro economic, a micro economic. Apply that to yourself and apply it to your home. Your home is not always going to be running at a surplus. Surplus means an excess, obviously, right? Uh, economists will set a, a number. They will forecast third quarter we're expecting GDP to grow at marginally three, let's say three percent. That's the expectation, the forecast. Actual numbers coming out. GDP grew at two and a half percent. That's a deficit. Ran below the uh, expectation or the target that was set. Uh, GDP came out at three spot seven and a half. Right. That's a surplus. You have spot 75 over what the gauge or the estimate was. The estimate was three. It came out at three spot seven five. So three and three quarters. Right. So it's a three quarter surplus as opposed to a deficit. I say that to say again, applying this to yourself in a microeconomic sense in your home, your home is not always going to be running at a surplus. It is okay. Don't calm down. Breathe. Have a USA moment. It is okay, folks, to all you social media world out there, it is okay to be running at a deficit. It is normal. Surprise, yes. Lo and behold, it is normal. It is part of the process of life to have surplus, deficit, deficit, surplus. It is totally a part of economics. It's part of the process. Breathe. Relax. Have a USA moment. Take a chill pill. Calm down. It's okay to go from a Mercedes to back on the bus. Don't forget humbled beginnings. It's okay to return to humble beginnings, folks. If you were driving a Mercedes Benz and now you're taking a bus, clearly life happened. It's fucking all right. And pardon the f bombs, but I could think of no other eloquent or elegant way to articulate myself with the passion that needs to be conveyed. It's okay to get on the bus. It's okay to be on the bus with people who are a little bit sweaty and smelly. They've been working all day. Like you have. It's okay to not be in the luxury and the comfort of the Mercedes and feel the crevice of each seat caressing your buttocks. It's okay to be on the hard plastic 
seat of the bus as opposed to the leather and the AC and the luxury and the smooth riding the purring of that engine. It's okay to hear the roaring of the lion and the tiger of the bus as opposed to the purring of the luxurious BMW. It's okay. Folks, I, I've had all kinds of submariners. Submariners are Rolexes. I've had presidential. I've had blue face. I've had standard. I, 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 at one point, I was in Martha's Vineyard every other weekend. Now I got a car that's doing the Harlem shake when I drive. Okay. I, I've had Hummers, uh, uh, Range Rovers. I've had Mercedes, uh, BMWs. And, and just last year, I was riding the bus. I was on the bus. It, it, okay. If my car keeps all them shaking on me, I might be on the bus tomorrow. It's okay. It's okay. Here's why it's not. Here's why we think it's not okay. Here's the real problem. You want to know what the real problem is? The real problem isn't you getting on the bus. Here's the real problem. Instagram. The word Instagram, if you compartmentalize it, you have instant and you have gram. Instance. Instant instance. Let me explain something to you. Instagram is an instance. An instance is a moment. An instance is a moment. It is a right now moment. What people, what put like this, in, in politics, when you want to uh, paint your, your opponent a certain way when you're campaigning against someone, you edit the things they say, right? You might take a, a, a full sentence, you edit it, you chop it up, and you slant it to... Uh, you manipulate the, the letters, you slant it to say something other than what the person actually meant. In other words, you take it out of context and you present that to the constituents who you're relying on for their votes, right? So you present that to the constituents and the constituents are going to give you or you're going to elicit a certain reaction out of those constituents that caters to your desire and or needs based off the slanting, manipulation, and editing of the, 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 the message or the sentence or the statement that your opponent made. I say that to say this. When, when you, are, you are hooked on this Instagram, Facebook, and all these other social media sites, what, we're, what people are doing, right, is they're, they're, they're editing their lives. The same thing I just explained to you in the aforementioned, they're editing their lives, they're slanting their lives, they're collage. They put together these collage, right? A mixture of pictures, right? And it's an instant of their life. It's not their whole life. It's it's bullshit. It's an instant, a very microscopic instant of their life that they snap, paste, and, and edit and put together and then boom, put it out into the ether, into the social media world. And then there's people like there's people who sit there, see this. And say, oh, their life is great. Their life is awesome. My life sucks. And these people become depressed because they're looking at the instant of your life, the instance of your life, and judging their lives, valuing their lives based off the instance or an instant of your life, which is bullshit. Now, these people are becoming anxious. They're becoming suffering from anxiety, depression, and all kinds of psychological illnesses, and pathological illnesses, to where I'm in the office today on CNBC. They're talking about, I think it was Facebook, is considering restricting the amount of likes a person could get. And the, the idea behind it, the science behind it, or the rationale, is they want to limit the amount of likes you can get because they're finding that in the social media community, people are be becoming depressed because they don't get as much likes as their counterparts. So I am depressed, I'm sad, I'm gloomy, I'm dismal, right? I sink into melancholy because I only have 10 likes while you have 20 likes. So you doubled my amount of likes, so you must be double better than me. Your value must be worth twice my value. You must be two times the man I am. You must be two times better than me, and I'm two times, that makes me two times worse than you, two times lower than you, and I'm fucking depressed now. Do you see how pathetic this shit is? You see how pathetic it is, folks? So, I, 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 I'm passionate about this. I, I'm very passionate about this. Get on the bus. It's okay to get on the bus. It's, it's, it's okay. Every night is not going to be ramen noodles. Uh, excuse me. 
every night is not going to be filet mignon. It will be ramen noodles. It's okay to eat ramen noodles again. It, it's okay to eat uh, uh, the, the goober. It, it's okay. It's okay to go from the luxury of your Lexus and your Benz and your Bentleys and your BMWs and, and, and say, okay, I got to get on the train. I got to get on public transportation again. It, Folks, do not lose your mind over that. Do not become uh, so uh, hyperactive over that. Do not become so anxious and angry and, and depressed over it. It's okay. It is okay. It's okay to grab your kids, take your kids, and get on the bus with them. It's okay. Nothing is wrong, folks, with humbled beginnings. Always remember this. If and should you hit rock bottom, think about the statement, rock bottom. It connotates something negative, right? But here's where you have to use fifth dimensional thinking and see positivity in what's considered negativity. Forget the glass is being half full. See the glass as completely full. Rock and bottom is a foundation. This house could not have been built unless there was a rock bottom. Oh, I'm preaching now. Don't stop me. This house could not have been built. This building, this, this architect could not have been designed save there was a rock on the bottom. Oh, I'm preaching. I'm preaching real good. There must be a foundation from which you can build. So should you find yourself in rock bottom? Should you hit rock bottom? Understand, this is a great place to start. This is a great place to a launching pad. From rock bottom, I launch into the motherfucking future. Understand, it is nothing wrong with hitting rock bottom. The problem is we're letting this instance instance of others' lives determine how we feel about ours, our worth, our value, and therefore we are acting that out. But I, 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 again, this video, what I'm doing here, this is probably the most uncoolest video there is that, that will ever enter into the social media world. I'm, I am definitely the, the, what, the contrarian. I would be the, uh, the, the iconoclast. I would be the, uh, the, the Definitely the, the rebel, right? Because everyone puts up video. I, I'm sitting in my basement with, with this shit right here behind me, my, my whiteboard, my bathroom. There's, there's no fancy schmancy. I'm not on a yacht. I'm not out with my friends with all kind of colors on and shit and trying to make you think that I have this luxurious, wonderful life. This shit sucks. Like, I got laundry back here. It, it is what it is. This is my life. I'm not sitting here trying to portray the bullshit. Folks, don't be caught up so much in the instance of a person's life, as a lot of these people who have shown you the instance of their lives, make no mistake about it. A lot of them go home to misery. A lot of them go home to dismay and despair. And this is why they have to betray this phony life, this fake life, so that they can feel good about themselves, right? True confidence has nothing to do with that. Nothing. Let me tell you something. Folks, strengthen this. Strengthen this. Strengthen your mind. Strengthen your mind. Strengthen your mind. Shut down your computer. Shut down your internet. Shut down your, your, your social media. Shut down your cell phone. Get rid of all your friends. Get rid of the kids. Get rid of the wives and husbands. And just spend some time with yourself. Five minutes, ten minutes, an hour, two hours, whatever you want to do. Spend some time. Unplug from everything. And just spend some time loving you. For Just for you being you. Just for you being normal. Ordinary, regular. Nothing wrong with being regular. Nothing wrong with being normal. We get so caught up in this vanity and 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 who's wearing what, who has this, who the who's who's who Snapchat did, who, how many followers you got, how many this that. Folks, calm, breathe, breathe, everybody, breathe. It's okay. It's okay. Relax. You're good. You're okay. You're right. Till next time. Y'all know how to do our cookbooks and birthday info. <coughs> Peace.